hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be sharing with you 10 powerful and important power bi tricks that will enhance your report creation it's going to take your report creation from zero to 100 so let's get started so the first one is dynamic search box in slicers so we know that slicers are used to filter our data we use it to filter our report basically so here i have a slicer that has both product category and product name and this is what the slicer looks like so if i want to select any product name i have to go to a particular category and now start scrolling up and down to select any particular product name but to make it easier for us what you can do is if you over on this particular slicer visual you see this ellipsis this three dots here you just click on it and when you click on it you select search so this is what search does if you come to select anything within your slicer let me click this drop down so for this search now you see that there's a search icon here there's a search box here that we can type the name of anything that we want to type so let's say i want a name from maybe the mountain bikes category i can select only mountain bikes or if you know the specific name you type the name it is going to show up and you can now easily scroll and maybe select whatever name you want to select and your report will be filtered based on that particular product name so that is how the search box can help you filter your report very quickly the next feature we are going to look at is play all slicers so right now you see that a particular report user can use your report filter the report and forget to actually clear the selections so by default if you over on this particular slicer there is an icon here that says clear selections but not every report user might be able to do that in order for you to make it more easy for them to understand or to see what they are supposed to do you can just come over to where you have the insert tab so under insert tab i'm going to click insert and i'll come over to where i have my buttons I'm going to scroll down to where I have clay all slicers. So if I put clay all slicers, it's a button. You can format this button to whatever you want it to look like. Okay, so there are options for you to format the button. But this is what the clay all slicers does. So right here, this report is already filtered to this point. So if any other report user comes, the numbers may not be adding up. What the person can easily do is to come over to this clay all slicers. Since I'm still in my Power BI desktop, I'm going to click Control plus this link. But once you publish it to your Power BI service, just click on the link. It's going to automatically clear all the slicers. So you can see that our report has gone back to default so that is what clay or slicers does and of course it enhanced our report usability so we have another very cool feature which is called the analyze feature i particularly love this feature so let's say i have a line chart here so this line chart is just showing the um daily sales it's showing the sales by each of the days and you can see from this line chart that there are some days that we have massive sales and there are some days that we have low sales so sometimes you may want to um, know the factors that are contributing to these massive sales and maybe compare those factors to the factors that led to the low sales of maybe another day or the previous day in order to do this right on your line chart you come over to any of the data points that you want to analyze so let's say i want to analyze this increase because this seems to be like a spike in this particular data so i'll just come over to this data point and right click on it once i right click you can see the analyze feature here and when i over on the analyze it says explain the increase so it already knows that that is an increase based on that visual so it's telling us that we want to explain the increase so i'm going to select explain the increase and once i select explain the increase it brings out this dialog box so this dialog box is just showing the analysis it's already telling us here is the analysis of 92.31 increase for the sum of other totals between the dates of this particular data set and if you scroll down it's going to it's just basically going to use different columns to explain what factors contributed to that particular increase so the first one is from the subcategory so we see that subcategory mountain bikes led to more increase in the sales of that particular day and of course if you scroll down you see other factors like um, product name and other dates you even see product category so for here you can visually see that e-bikes is the one that accounted for majority of the increase and it has a text that explains all of these factors another beautiful thing about this feature is that you can change this visual to any of these 
other visuals right here or if you don't want to change anything you can even take an insight from the text and add it to a part of your report or if you want to pin this visual let's say you want to pin the product category so your report users can see which product category led to that massive increase for that particular day you just come over to where you have this plus sign and just add it to your page so once you add it to your page you can see that the visual has been automatically added to your page okay and if you have any feedback to give to power bi if the feature is cool or not you can use any of this button give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down for negative feedback so okay so that is what the analyze feature helps us to do so the next feature we'll be talking about is actually forecast features so we know for what forecasting is for forecasting is basically for predictions okay so it's basically we have to use our historical data to predict what our sales will look like in the coming days could be in the coming month or even in the coming yes okay so power bi has that particular feature so for these line charts right here let's say we want to forecast what the since these are daily sales let's say we want to forecast what the coming days has for us let's let's see the sales that we might like let's predict sales for the coming days in power bi so we're going to select this visual once you select this visual under the format pane you scroll down to where you have forecast and then turn the forecast option on once you turn the forecast option on you just expand it and when you expand you just scroll down so where you have units so this unit is, is selecting whatever you want to use it's either you want to use your years or quarters or months you want to forecast based on that but right now we just want it to be at its default state so the focus length is 10 so this particular visual is showing the daily sales so we want to forecast we want to predict sales for the next 10 days okay and of course you can also change your uh, confidence interval you can change it to 99 at least to be very sure of the prediction so if you change anything you have to click on apply and once you click on apply so this is what the forecast does so if you count from 28th of march up until 7th of april that's like 10 days away from this particular data set so it's already showing you what your prediction what your sales prediction looks like so that is it for the forecast feature in Power BI. Our next simple and easy trick is using the Q&A visual. So Q&A is actually an AI visual that helps you use, you just use your natural language to ask questions about your data set. So this is how you can do that. So let's say I select this and I scroll down to select on Q&A visual. So this is what Q&A does. Let me just quickly expand it and take it up a bit. I'm going to remove it shortly from there because it's not supposed to cover any other thing. So here you, it says ask question about your data. So in this method, you can easily use it to create visuals for your report. So the question I'm going to ask, I'll say top 10 product name. So let's use our product name by other total. So what you have to note is that when you are asking questions about your data set, you have to use the exact name of the columns within your data. So if we say top 10 products by other total and select it, we already see the top 10 product name here. It's already showing here. Let me just shift it a little. I don't want to add it to my visual, but I'm showing you how you can quickly create something like this using q and a visual which is actually an ai visual in power bi so if you have this correctly and you've checked that everything is correct you can decide to also pin this visual so let's say you want to pin the visual you come to this icon click on it it will say turn the q and a result into a standard visual and you click on it once you click on that particular um, icon it turns it to a normal standard visual that you can add to your report okay so maybe let's say i wanted to add this to my report i can just bring it down here and reduce it or just do anything with it so right now i really don't need to add product name to my report but this is a quicker and easier way for you to get your reports done within minutes 
another cool feature in power bi is lock update so right now you see that if you click on any of this visual here it has some anchor points that can easily make this visual move from one place to another let's say i shift it it's moving from one place to another and after creating your report you don't want your visuals to move at all what you can do is you just come over to where you have your view tab and when you click on your view tab you come under this page options group and then you select lock objects so once you lock this object you can see that if i click on any visual this visual do not have those anchor points again and if you try to move this particular visual it is not going to move to any way so these visuals are practically locked they cannot move from one point to the other if you want to unlock it you just unselect this lock object and of course your visuals will now have the anchor point again meaning that it can be moved from one place to another in part yeah you can decide to organize your data set and make it more easy for you to navigate through so if i open up my table here you see this is only one table which says sales table and everything is basically scattered so if you want to navigate it can be very difficult to start finding things about maybe customers products or just anything in order to create folders to help in navigating easily what you can do is you come over to where you have your model view and select it so on the model view if i open up this sales table right here let's say i want to group all everything that has to do with the customer data i want to group them into a particular folder i can quickly select them at once in order to select them at once i'll hold down my control key on my keyboard and just keep selecting anything that has to do with the customer i'm just going to select all of them so i've selected these four columns right here and under the display folder i'm going to type customers so if i type customers and press enter you will see that a folder has been automatically created for my customer so if i need to select anything that has to do with a customer i will just come to this folder and select it so i can do same thing for product as well so i'll just hold out my control key select everything that has to do with product i'll just select this and select this then when i'm done under display folder I'm going to type a name for the folder. I'll call it products. Then I'll press enter. Once I press enter, everything is now displayed into a folder. So you can see once I minimize or collapse the folder, all the products are here. So if I want to select anything that has to do with products and use it in my report, I'll have to expand that particular folder. So that is how you can organize columns within your data table. So let's go back to our report view. This other feature is another quick way that you can easily change columns in your data set. You can easily rename columns. So for this card visuals where we have here, I have some of other quantity and I want this card visual to carry only other quantity. So I'm going to select the card visual and where I have some of other quantity, I'm going to double click on it and change the name to whatever name I'm going to change. So the name is going to change for only the visual. It is not going, the name is not going to change for the column. It is going to change for only the visual. So for the customer ID, I can do the same thing. Let's say I want to make it number of customers. I'm just going to double click on it and then I'll type number of customers. So if I type number of customers and press enter, you can see that the name of this particular visual has changed. Remember, like I said, it's not going to affect the name of the original column that was used here. It's just the name of the visual that has changed. So you can apply that to every other visual that you need to change the name. Another quick feature that we're going to use is visual calculation. This is actually a latest update in Power BI and it's actually a very cool feature. I want you to also explore on your own. In order for you to activate this particular feature, what you do is you click on your file tab. That means you have to update your Power BI to the latest version. Then you click on your file tab. When you click on your file tab, just click on options and settings and click on options. Then once this dialog box shows, you just click on preview features and other preview features, you scroll down 
and select make sure you select visual calculations once you select visual calculations then you click ok so remember for every preview features once you apply a preview feature you have to relaunch your power bi desktop so if you were working on a project or a report just make sure that you save that report first and of course just launch back your power bi desktop so that feature can be applied I've already applied the feature that's why mine is already selected so let's just go back to our visual so this is what that visual does if you click on any visual and you want to make any calculations just click on your home tab and under your home tab under calculations group you see where we have new calculation so if you click on new calculation it's going to open up a page where you can calculate anything that you need to calculate so if you want examples of what you can possibly calculate you can click on this fx and it's going to show you different things that you can calculate for this data set or if you have a specific thing that you want to calculate based on the columns for this particular visual you can type the calculations here so let's say i want to know the running sum for this particular visual so it's going to impute the dax formula for me and it's just going to show me where i have to impute the field so the field i'm going to use here is my other totals which represent my cells so remember if you are using this particular visual calculation since it's actually a visual calculation whatever you are calculating should already be in the visual it should be already added to the visual so you can see that some of other total is already in the visual except i add another column from the data set to here i cannot actually add it to these calculations so let's say i want to see the running sum for some of other total i'm just going to put that and then press enter this is actually my running sum and i can just click okay to commit that and probably go back to my report so i can allow this to be in my report so the only plus here is that it is only for a particular visual it's not like other measures that you have to create and reuse for every other visual it is only for a specific visual so if you want to calculate something like that again you have to calculate it for another visual entirely so that is how that works so remember i said it's a new feature that just came out february 2024 and you can just keep exploring the feature and let me know what you think about it so the last thing we're going to talk about out is how to publish our reports so we know that there are two ways to publish our report if you want to publish your report to power bi service you have to first of all save your report once you save your click here to save your report and come over here to click on publish your report but at some point you also notice that not all your report users have access to power bi service so what can you do to help them so what you can do first is to save your report after saving your report you just click on file tab and then scroll down to click on export and then click export to pdf so it's going to generate a pdf of this report for us and once this pdf is generated you can see the pdf has opened here so you can save the document and also send it to your other report users thank you so much guys for watching this video let me know which of these features you've tried out and which one is actually very cool to you if you have other ones that you've learned and you know you can also share it in the comment section for others to learn but if you don't not to worry the more you learn the more you keep discovering some powerful features that power bi has to offer thank you so much once again for watching this video